Hello, today I have John Murkovic from the Cook County Clerk's Office. He's the deputy clerk uh, and he oversees all the technology and communications working with Karen Yarbrough. And today I'm gonna to be talking to him about protecting the vote from cyber attacks. Uh, first, I wanted to start off with recapping what happened in 2016. Uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, was fished with an email on March 19, 2016. And what had happened is he forwarded an email to a staffer that had replied with a typo. Uh, the staffer said, this is legitimate email versus what should have, what the staffer should have said is, this is an illegitimate email. So he did the right thing by checking first, but he probably should have picked up the phone and not relied on email. Uh, so then he went and he clicked through and, and reset his password. And the type of attacks that are happening right now are such that when you click a link, sometimes it's, it will pretend to be Office 365 or Google and it will want you to put your username and password in uh, so that you can see the document. Well, in fact, those sites are uh, getting your, your credentials for later cyber attacks or they're trying to put malware on your, your computing device. So. Um, what happened after that, um, April 2016, uh, hackers created a fake email uh, account and spearfished 30 Clinton staffers. Um, they sent a spreadsheet that had the name Hillary Clinton Favorable Rating XLX X, and that attachment was designed to make the staffer want to click. So these are social engineering attacks on campaign staff, and then. Later, DC Leaks was registered and all these emails were published and put out there, um, which was very damaging and probably changed the outcome of the election in 2016. So I have uh, John here, and John, I wanna ask you, what steps have, have, has the Cook County clerk uh, taken to prevent similar attacks here in Cook County? Well, I think one is that we don't uh, make it so easy that you can change credentials via one email that way. So, so what happened to, to Mr. Podesta, it would have required a few more steps in our agency, which it was usual, is usually good, I guess. But um, it, it was such a clever attack, there's almost no way to stop something that, that clever and that relies on, on someone's you know, sense of urgency and emotion. So you know, we, in our office, you know, we, we work with Cook County on our email servers, so, so we would reach out to a different office to, to work with that. So, so the ability to make it hard to change emails, for example, it you know, can be frustrating mm -hmm. sometimes, but you, know, you realize when you build those layers up, if they frustrate you, that means they're going to frustrate an attacker as well. So that's, that's one way. <laughs> well, so, so deployment of frustration, a, a, a government staple, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the old help desk. <laughs> <laughs> well, having these processes in place, though, are by design, they help protect people and make it more difficult for hackers to get in. So that's great. Um, there's been a lot of talks about potential hacks coming on election day. Should, should voters be concerned that their vote's gonna be hacked on election day? I think they, they should be more concerned about the, the disinformation campaign that is going on about hacking voting machines in Illinois and that you know, we have the misinformation from you know, nebulous foreign state actors, but there are actually people in this country who are being paid, you know, they think they're working for a news agency, but it's, it's some shell and all they're doing is spreading misinformation, especially in Illinois. You know, we've had to refute notions that our, our uh, ballot marking devices are connected to the internet and that anybody can get in there so to, to answer your question we you know we use a lot of layers of security and, and some of them and the main one is we don't even give ourselves the ability to update these machines on election day yeah. or in the field mm -hmm. which again that frustrates us but you know we also know that if there's no way to communicate with those machines by us even mm -hmm. then then no one else can so well, is, isn't there also a simultaneous paper audit trail the, the, for the, the voting machines yeah, so Cook, uh, voters in suburban Cook County should be really happy with this system we have in Illinois, which requires a paper backup of every vote. So uh, voters in the suburbs may remember, I don't know if they had them in the city, but they may remember the uh, sort of receipt paper printers that were built into the machines, and they would 
kind of scroll really quick and, and show you what you voted for, but it really wasn't user friendly. So, John, uh, just finally, should voters be concerned about election equipment being hacked on election day? Well, you know, it depends where they live. If, if they live in a state that isn't as committed to security, I think that people should ask questions, and these are the right types of questions to ask. And if, if you live in a state and you find out your, your ballot marking device or voting machine is connected to the Internet, you should be worried about that. Uh, in Illinois, that is not the case, and we don't even use the open Internet for, for any transmission of data. We use secure cellular networks that you know, can work one-way communications and send encrypted data, which cannot be tampered with in transit. So, you know, voters should ask questions, and but they should also be mindful of, you know, who's causing them to ask questions, and if that person is playing on their emotions. Great. Do you think that early voting and vote by mail will help reduce or the potential impact of election day hacking? Yeah, I, I believe so. If you think about you know, centralized and versus decentralized targets. Uh, you know, an election where you have ballots being cast in, in 400,000 different locations as opposed to 1,000, that, that's a bigger attack vector and harder to, you know, for a foreign adversary to, to manipulate, really. So, so really a mail election sort of really makes it hard for, for a, you know, a hacker to you know, find a way to, to get in there. So I think that vote by mail does make elections safer. Great. Well, thanks a bunch for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking time to come on. Thank you, Lee.